All right, hello everyone, and finally the day has come. Time to see what the maid Ryoshu and Ishmael uh, characters are going to do. But first, before that, let's talk about the April 18th schedule update notice. And of course, we're getting the banner. We're also getting a target extraction for Heathcliff. Very appropriate, but I mean, his ID hasn't come out yet, so this is not worth pulling yet. New identities added, Edgar family, blah, blah, blah. There's a new coupon code function, apparently. But it's not active yet, so don't need to worry about it yet. Uh, they are going to probably give us some like coupon shenanigans. Maybe you go hamang pang pang and then you can claim something or some or some stuff like that. Or maybe they just like have a stream and then they'll give codes like Genshin or something like that. Who really knows what they're trying to cook with this thing here. But hey, look forward to the codes and then I'll just post the codes whenever I see them. Alright, after that there's a few bugs. Uh, apparently Dawn's Ego, the electric screaming sheep. That one was spending 1.5% max HP instead of 1%. So they're changing it to actually 1%. Tremor Fracture does not work as intended, which is Otis's Ego Binds. So the count does not decrease after turn N, and now they made it so that the count decreases by 1 after turn N. I found out that the best way to use this uh, Ego is to bind them, and then they get fractured, and then you replace the Tremor Fracture with the Decay so that you can get additional defense level down on top of the stagger plus plus. So that's probably the best way to do it. As for the damage comparison, I didn't really get anyone else to do the math for me. So I'm going to say that it's probably better to just do binds fracture and after that you do the regular decay for maximum damage. And if you don't do that, well, that's not like the best option, but you still get quite a bit of damage. Whatever, I, don't, I haven't done the math for this one. And if you look at the calculation for the freaking game, it's a bit too much for me. Offense level and defense level is so annoying. Static and dynamic is super annoying. But yeah. Moving on, they are also nerfing uh, Keep the Ego. I guess it's not a nerf. It's more like I'm fixing the Ego because right now it's incredibly broken and is breaking the game in many, many ways. So now they're going to fix the Ego to actually what it's supposed to be, which is going to be the final coin damage to the target. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Right, and then after that, some 648 boss pattern fix. I haven't tried it yet. I will do a video on how to clear the post nerf ones since that's usually what the new players will be struggling with. And after that, there's not really much other interesting things, I think. Yeah, I mean, for 3 turns, lose 8 SP, whatever. Missing skill description, whatever. People don't read in Nimbus Company anyway. Yep, and then of course, 300 let me see. Yep, that's pretty much it. The main thing to know here is that your binds bug for Heathcliff is being fixed. And we're getting our good old Edgar family, uh, Ryoshu and Ishmael coming soon. Right. Now, let's go take a look at them. I haven't actually looked at them yet, but I already saw some juicy stuff for them uh, when the uh, Twitter post came out. All right. So, sweeping redirection. If this unit speed is faster than targets, gain coin power, coin power, coin power. Okay, that's fine. And she gains haste on second hit here. On crit on the first coin, she gains haste next turn. If this unit critically hits against targets with lower speed, inflict additional negative effects. Oh, okay. Deep cleaning. Love that. I love that. All right, so we got poise, and then we also have sinking. So we've got poise and sinking, and we also have haste, and we also have coin power if fast. All right, so that's a lot of things to slap onto one character. That's like three archetypes into one. It's like they slap the sang together with some of the poise gang, with some of the sinking gang, and all into one character pretty much. So this character it looks like a mix of many, many things and can probably fit into quite a few team comps. She has a Gloom Evade, which is good for the Gloom team. She provides Sloth and Gluttony. I believe the Gloom team currently lacks those, actually. Maybe. Uh, I haven't double-checked yet, but I suspect this character might actually help to fill up some of the, the Sin energy that they're missing. So you can actually replace this one with the, uh, with the Ishmael Molar, if you want to. It, because she gives sinking potency and then Mola Ishmael gives sinking count. But since the main drawback of sinking right now is stacking your potency to 99 really fast instead of the count, I would say maybe this is a bit better. It's because if you use uh, uh, Rodion's sinking ego, pretty much you have a crap ton of count and you also have the fact that you have the butlers, right? The butlers apply the uh, echoes of the mana, which is really good for maintaining your sinking count. So getting more potency is not a bad thing, actually. Yep. She provides quite a bit more sinking potency from what I can tell here. Potency here, potency here, potency here, potency here, and sinking count. Oh, and she also applies slash fragility next turn. That can never be like, 
I mean, that's always a good thing to see. Like, Slash Fragility next turn, that's a dub. That's a W right there. Yeah, this character looks really, really strong. Restraining Technique, that's one of the moves that Nelly used. Uh, housekeeping and Sweeping Redirection. I mean, I I think Nelly did use something like this in the art, but I don't remember the exact names. I assume that she did do this. You know, defense Level Down, Bind, he's pretty much a simple character to understand. She goes fast, she applies Seeking Potency, and she loves critting. Pretty simple character, and if you can crit, you get additional negative effects. I do not know what these effects are yet, but yeah, this character seems pretty solid so far. Looks like a solid support, probably has very good clashing once you're able to get your speed to be faster, which is honestly very easy in this game, in my opinion, except like maybe specific bosses with very high speed levels. Yep. Right, moving on to the next one, Ryoshu. Now this one's the, the exciting one, because we have BM. If you don't know what BM means, it means Butler's Mark. And if you still don't know what that means, it means you haven't cleared the story, so I will not elaborate anymore. But essentially, this mark here will enhance certain skills just like someone in the story mode. Right. So, receiving arts 1, the hunt. Receiving arts 7, capture. And receiving arts 2, snap your neck cleanly. Okay. Very, very lore-friendly names. I love it. Oh my god, the evasion is called mediocre. Very real sure. Very real sure. I love it. Right. So go faster, gain clash power. Oh, this one's coin power, this one's clash power. Uh, gain poise, gain poise, inflict butler's mark. If this unit speed is faster, also gain clash power, not coin power again. Oh, she is two coin, two coin, two coin. Yep. I did notice in the trailer her skill tree was also a two coiner. So I was wondering if her damage is going to be quite low because two coins limit your damage output by quite a bit. Consume X poise card. Oh, attack weight. Okay, never mind. I take that back. All right, there's a reason why she has two coins. Attack weight is pretty huge for multiplying your damage. Gain poise on crit, inflict BM, and inflict BM again. Okay. Gain clash power if target has BM. If this unit speed is faster, you gain coin power. Oh, it changes. Clash, clash, and then coin. So skill tree will get coin power, but it's only two coins. Gain poise count, gain poise, inflict bind, increase stagger, inflict another BM if you crit. So these guys are crit. She's pure crit. There's no, there's no sinking anywhere in the kit. For Ishima, she gets a bunch of sinking, but for Ryoshu, she gets none at all. Huh, it's like a totally separate character from the Sinking Gang, pretty much. Hmm. Looks like she wants to be slapped into the Poise Gang. She provides Lust and she has a blue skill on her skill too. So possible to slap her into the Poise Gang, honestly. As long as you have blue, you can actually be slapped into there. Gain Poise, Bind, Stagger, Threshold. Target Stagger, deal more damage on the crit. Oh my god, wait a minute. Reuse skill once on a random target with BM. Okay, never mind. That seems very strong, actually. Wait a minute. Reuse skill once on a random target. Oh, it only repeats one time. Oh, but he has to kill, he has to kill. I see. We got an onrush, aka a mutilate. So if you kill again, you get to do this again. So the goal here seems to be you want to build up some uh you want to build up some poise count. You get the AoE on the skill too. That inflicts a bunch of butler's marks to a bunch of enemies. And then after that, you snap their necks. And if you play it correctly, you can probably snap all of their necks in one go. Very, very cool design, honestly. So you have to set up your own shit instead of relying on like an on-kill effect like Mutilate for Ting Tang. Yeah, this is actually really, really interesting. I like this skill tree a lot. Right, evasion is heal SP and gain poise count. This requires poise count only, I see. Okay, but she still needs poise potency from somewhere, which is going to be skill 2 and skill 3. Skill 2 will be AOE, so she will get quite a bit of poise from her skill 2 once she builds up some poise count from either skill 1 or from the evasion, okay? On hit against targets with BM, you gain poise count. Oh my god, another source of poise count. Okay, lovely. Gain haste next turn. On crit against targets with BM, eliminate BM on target. Okay, it deletes the BM. If this unit speed is faster than the targets, you also deal X% percent more damage on crit for every X speed difference. Oh my goodness, this character seems... Seems balanced, I would say. Like, the damage output it doesn't seem to be incredible due to this stuff here. But her AoE ability and her snapping necks is kinda... It's kinda sick. I think she's more specialized to be an ad clearer not exactly meant to be a single target damage dealer because of her coins and the fact that she's AoE. If the target has two parts, then she's a lot better. But eliminating this requires a kill, that's the problem. So skill 3 is really meant for killing, or skill 2 doesn't really matter. If you want to just use your skill 2, 
just to hit two parts of the enemy's body, I think that's totally fine. That's actually quite a lot of damage. But uh, when against bosses, this skill tree is not going to be very, very interesting. Yeah. It's going to be a bit tricky to set up for some fights, I think. Because some fights, you really want to kill the bosses' ads really, really fast. So you don't have time to set up Butter's Marks and then snap all the next if on the go. But yeah, this character seems very, very interesting for ad clearing. Not really for dealing damage to a single target. But at the same time, if you're just going for the crit gang, you could just slot her in if you don't have any other crit characters to slap in. Yep. Okay, I'll just wait until the coins are actually released first before I judge whether she's going to be a terrible DPS or whatnot. But... Essentially, she's going to be some very. She's going to be a very good cleanup character. Like as long as targets are low, as long as she hit the capture one time, she's going to snap all their necks in one go. It's going to look very, very cool and very, very clean. Reminds me of On Rush on Gebura or Pretty Late on Ting Tang. Yep. All right, so that's really it. I expected the Butler's Mark, honestly, so not really too much of a surprise. The Ishmael one is a surprise though because it's like three different archetypes into one character. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. Right. So in summary, pretty much Ishmael going to be a solid sinking support, but also benefits from crit and also likes to be faster than the enemy. Ryushu is wants to be faster than the enemy, is a poised character, full on out, and is more specialized into clearing a bunch of ads. And then for the next update, we got a banner, we got Heath Cliff Extraction, I wouldn't recommend that one. And we got some coupon codes, which is going to be very interesting to see what they are going to add in the future for this coupon stuff. Maybe there's like mini games or something, or like a stream or something that you have to watch to get a coupon code. So keep an eye out for that one. And then after that, your Heath Cliff Vines. Unfortunately, you're before the king getting nerfed, aka fixed. So have fun with it while it is still here. Yep. Right, so that's going to be it for this video. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you guys when the actual coins are dropped. Bye bye.